हेलो क्लास टूडेज टॉपिक इज सेंट्रीफ्यूगेशन प्रिंसिपल्स एंड मेथडोलॉजी ना वी आर स्टडींग द टॉपिक ऑफ मैकेनिकल सेपरेशन इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव लर्न सेडिमेंटेशन नाउ सेकेंड टाइप ऑफ मैकेनिकल सेपरेशन इज सेंट्रीफ्यूगेशन नाउ सेंट्रीफ्यूगेशन इज मोस्ट कॉमनली परफॉर्म्ड टेक्निक इन एनी लेबोरेटरी सो इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट टू हैव अ प्रॉपर नॉलेज ऑफ द प्रिंसिपल्स एंड प्रैक्टिस ऑफ द सेंट्रीफ्यूगेशन नाउ फर्स्ट द हिस्ट्री इन इन एटीन सिक्सटी फोर एंटोन प्रैंडल पाइनियर्ड द आइडिया ऑफ अ डेरी सेंट्रीफ्यूज टू सेपरेट क्रीम फ्रॉम मिल्क एंड इन एटीन सेवेंटी नाइन फ्रेडरिक मिशर हु वॉज द फर्स्ट पर्सन टू आइसोलेट न्यूक्लिक एसिड एंड डेवलप्ड अ क्रूड सेंट्रीफ्यूज सिस्टम विच वॉज इम्प्रूवड बाई गुस्ताफ दे लावेल ना इन 1925 थियोडोर स्वेडवर्ग डेवलप्ड द फर्स्ट एनालिटिकल अल्ट्रा सेंट्रीफ्यूज सो एंड इन 1949 स्पेशलाइज्ड इंस्ट्रूमेंट कॉर्पोरेशन डेवलप्ड मैक्सिमम स्पीड ऑफ 40,000 थाउजेंड आर पी एम बाई स्पिनको सो वी कैन सी the scientist behind this technique now physical principles of centrifugation centrifugation is the process of separation of particles from a solution based on their size shape density viscosity particles can be cells protein centrifugation can be used to separate two immiscible liquids also what are immiscible liquids which are which can not be separated by normal filtration that are immiscible liquids other than immiscible liquids the particulate matter or the solid material or macro particles from a liquid sample are separated by the centrifugation on the basis of size shape difference in density and difference in viscosity now to understand the centrifugation process it is important to understand the physical principles behind the sedimentation and centrifugation centrifugal force we have already discussed the sedimentation now you can see in this figure it is the illustration of classical example of centrifugation centrifugal force in this we can see a ball tied to a thread when thrown in a circular motion so it is the fixed axis of rotation this arrow is thread and this is ball and this is when this fixed axis is triggered or revolved around its, its axis then centrifugal force act on the string and centripetal force accelerate the revolution that is the velocity so like that only the sample 
revolves around the axis in centrifugation and rpm and rcf facilitates the separation based on density or viscosity now moving further to the centrifugal force centrifugal force is an inertial force directed away from the axis of rotation that appears to act on all objects when viewed in a rotating frame of reference now what is inertial force inertial force or inertia means tendency of anything which doesn't wants to move so rotation on its axis make move things which is known as centrifugal force centrum in latin means center and fugger means to flee so from center anything make to flee is known as centrifugal force two forces counteract the centrifugal force acting on the suspended particles buoyancy the buoyant force and the frictional force what is buoyancy buoyancy is the force with which particles must displace the liquid media into which they sediment so as we have learned sedimentation we know particles displace liquid media to go to the bottom in order to sediment so the force acting with which the particles displace the liquid media is known as buoyancy and the frictional force the this force is generated by the particles as they migrate through the solution so friction between uh, the solid particles which tend to sediment and the liquid particles which tend to be liquid during sedimentation is the frictional force now we know the sedimentation velocity formula given by stokes equation as we have discussed in the earlier lecture now centrifugation centrifugal force can be depicted using this formula we know how to calculate sedimentation now we will see how to calculate centrifugal force centrifugal force or friction that is fc friction by the centrifugal force or the fc is the centrifugal force is equal to mv square upon r or fc is equal to mw square r w is the angular velocity is it is equal to the v by r now what is the angular velocity angular velocity is the speed at which something rotates on its axis that is angular velocity fc is the centrifugal force then m is the mass v is the speed and the r is radius now friction is the force resisting the relative motion of solid surfaces fluid layers and material elements sliding against each other as we progress the centrifugal force or we apply the centrifugal force there will be friction between solid surfaces fluid layers and material elements 
sliding against each other so the following formula for frictional force based on the newton's second law of motion that is friction is equal to mu n mu is the coefficient of friction and n is the normal force now the most important terminologies used in the centrifugation first is rpm this is the abbreviation the capital r p m full form is revolution per minute the number of revolution what is revolution the revolving around its axis like earth that is revolution which centrifuge do so rpm is the number of revolutions per minute by the rotor of the centrifuge and the number of revolutions of the sample is subjected to in a minute so we can see the figure and understand a uh, this is the figure of centrifuge now we can see the centrifuge this is the sample holder this is the top cap which is closed during the centrifugation then this is the sample holder where sample is kept and uh, in test tubes or centrifugal tubes this is the axis on which the motor shaft is there then this is the dc motor which gives power to move the sample holder or rotor on motor shaft with the help of motor shaft then here is embedded control system and the button case will be there on the outer sur surface of the centrifuge so we can understand what is it now rcf rcf refers to the relative centrifugal field the amount of gravitational force relative to that of earth's gravitational force the sample is subjected and we can understand this by understanding the relationship that is angular velocity angular velocity is equal to the radians per second now what is the radians we can understand radians by this the movement per second the movement per second from here to here movement per second is the one radian so angular velocity is equal to the radians per second now one revolution per minute is the w into 60 that is 60 second and 2 pi 2 pi is the circumference of the circuit so one revolution per minute is equal to w we have seen the w what is w w is the angular velocity so one rev revolution per minute is equal to angular velocity into time upon the circumference of the circle so rcf is equal to w square r now we can understand this where r is the distance from motor to the sample this is the key from motor to the sample the distance the angular velocity that is radian per second and the gravitational force that is 9.8 so 
the W square angular velocity square into R is the RCF. So this is the standard formula derived. We don't need to have derivation. We just we'll just learn that RCF is equal to eleven point one eight into radius into in bracket RPM upon thousand bracket close square. So this is the formula for now. We can understand what is the importance of the RCF. First, we can compare the RPM and RCF, and we can make out the difference between RPM and RCF. Suppose there are two types of centrifuge where RPM is same. Assume that centrifuge one has RPM of five thousand and centrifuge two also have the same RPM, the five thousand. But the centrifuge one has the rotor radius of ten centimeter. That is the distance from axis of the rotor that shaft to the outer area of the outer line of the rotor circle that is the radius 10 cm and here we can see that radius in centrifuge tool is 7 cm now we can see the difference we can calculate the rcf from being radius 10 cm that is 11.8 into 10 10 is the radius and rpm upon 1000 and we can assume that radius is 7 then we can see the difference in rcf so even if the rpm value is the same rcf value can be different so the capacity the force on the sample can be different on the basis of the design of the centrifugal rotor now the components of the centrifuge there are four type of components parts of centrifuge as we have seen the rotor the motor rotor which have the we can see the figure this is the rotor which moves on its axis this is the shaft and this is the motor and this is the control system so rotor motor shaft cabinet with operating controls it is a electric motor driven equipment and that puts an object in rotation around a fixed axis applying a force perpendicular means at 90 degree angle to the axis to separate substances so during centrifugation the denser substance settles towards the bottom of the tube and the test tube used in centrifugation can be called pellet so and the lighter substances stay afloat that are known as supernatant we can see and understand this by a diagram that is before and after before the solid particles are all over the sample and after the centrifugation all so solid particles are together here sedimentated and the supernatant fluid is here so 
and rotor is rotating so you can understand this now what is the rotor rotor that holds tubes bottle bags containing the liquids to be centrifuged they are made up of high strength material aluminium alloy or stainless steel rotors come in different types and sizes they can be interchangeable also in one machine in one machine there can be different size and types of rotors can be used detached or attached now types of rotors swinging bucket rotor fixed angle rotor and vertical tube rotor so basically we can see that this is the fixed angle rotor the slightly the tubes are in a slanting position okay if tubes are swinging in a bucket then it is known as a swinging bucket rotor the bucket type of indent is there and test tubes are fixed then fixed angle rotor we have seen the vertical tube rotor means the tubes are in straight vertical position so swinging bucket rotor also known as horizontal rotor buckets holding the sample swing up horizontally during centrifugation thus there is an increase in radius and particles can move for a longer distance so if our sample needs to be in horizontal position to facilitate the separation we will use swinging butter bucket rotor then fixed angle rotor it is the most used rotor in a slanting angle 25 to 40 degree angle axis of uh, rotation the rotors hold the centrifugation tube and these move at the slanting position now vertical rotor works on the same principle but the angle of rotation is a straight now brake system in centrifuge when once the centrifugation is completed means the separation is completed then centrifugation motor should be off immediately so this is the brake system they are used to bring the rotor to a stand still once the centrifugation is over immediately this is the brake system then types of centrifuge centrifuges can be categorized or classified on four bases first is the based on size that is table top model or floor model floor models are big in size and table top models are compact in size they can be kept in on the table now based on maximum speed that is by the rotor is low speed centrifuge high speed centrifuge and ultra centrifuge based on the requirement of refrigeration that refrigerated and non refrigerated because the centrifugation process generate heat some samples are heat sensitive and for further use heat can damage the cells like denaturation of protein can be there so refrigeration is a mandatory requirement in for the some samples so there are refrigerated centrifuges as well as non refrigerated centrifuges are there then we know the based on rotor type now comparison of different types of centrifuges there is a table it depends on the speed range we can see that is the rpm need for refrigeration then the requirement of the vacuum so low speed 
the rpm is 2000 to 10000 then refrigeration is not mandatory the requirement of vacuum means uh, elimination of the air within the centrifuge system because air can arise give rise to the friction which can affect the speed of centrifugation so in ultra centrifuge the vacuum is absolutely required now this the possibility of the pelleting so if we want to separate all this we know what kind of centrifuge we can use now every laboratory or instrument facility will have various types of centrifuge we also have centrifuge in each and every lab so from for simple spinning of a vial containing something that just can be separated the particulate and the fluid can be separated in a easy way or the more rpm is needed the more rpm is needed now the we know the importance of refrigeration and va vacuum as we have discussed that uh, heat generation can uh, change the structure of protein or an other biomolecules so we need cooling system and friction of air all we have discussed so there are centrifugation process are two type differential centrifugation and density gradient centrifugation so but these are not in your course hmm? you only need to know the principle behind the centrifugation so you can prepare i think it is clear if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment box or you can contact me personally now you can prepare the handwritten notes based on this lecture on centrifugation principles and methodology